start with your full name, uh, your date of birth, and where you were born. Kim B. Clement. Uh, date of birth, 10, 26, 20. Caroline County, Virginia. And your branch of the service? Army. Army. Did you have any other veterans in your family? Yeah, I had two brothers. Two brothers were both? What branch of the service were they in? Uh, Army. Both Army. Mm -hmm. Both World War II vets? Both World War II vets. One was in South Pacific, one was with the uh, first airborne. He was in, in Bastogne. And all the, he was wounded when he went into France. And, he was wounded again in, 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 in Bastogne to be POW for 72 days. Anybody prior to World War II in military service? I had an uncle. Yeah. Oh. yeah. World War I, in World War I. World War I, yeah. World War I. Okay. Yeah. How about since? No. Anybody in your family? No. Obviously, Pearl Harbor was the beginning of our beginning of uh, the United States becoming involved in World War II. Do you remember where you were yeah. when you heard that? What you were thinking? How it affected you? Well, I thought maybe the past six, eight months. The more place I can. Where, where were you when you heard about it? I was working on, on a farm. Working on a farm? Yeah. Do you remember your, any, 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 what you were thinking, what you thought you know, when you heard? No, I just wondered what was, what was co coming next. And that was kind of the thought yeah. that, that, you know. But maybe it would be draft. You know. <clears throat> How old were you? 20. 20. Well, what was kind of the mood in your family or, the, or just kind of the mood that you felt uh, after Pearl Harbor and then leading up to your uh, join the military. Just wait and see what happened. Just wait and see what happened. Yeah. And you were drafted? Yeah. Do you remember that when you, when you found out? Yeah. Your number had been called? Yeah. What, what were you thinking? What, how did it... This is just another step. I, I got to go. Wasn't no place. I wasn't planning on running no place. Right. <laughs> where did you... Where did you receive your basic military training? Camp in Illinois. And what was your specialty in the, in the army? I was a medic. Medic. Yeah. Where, where was that training? Uh, well, uh, uh, Beaumont, Texas, uh, right south of El Paso. How long was that? Two months. Is that something that you requested, or they just no. told you you're going to be a medic? No, I just, they got me on a um, train for a camp lead. I ended up Camp Grant. <clears throat> and they said, congratulations, you're a medic? No, I didn't know what I was going to get to talk with. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> and then from there, where were, you, where were you, after you received that training, where did you go from there? Well, I went, went to Camp Grant, and then we went to... Uh, Brigham said to Utah. But that's where the uh, the the Third Force uh, General was assembled, and they pulled me out of there and sent me to Beaumont, Texas. Sent twenty some of us down there for two months. And that was when? When was that? What what month in year do you remember? Oh, the, we went up there in in, in January. And I stayed there probably until about June, yeah, June, June, June. And then that's when you give a bunch of us tests and I went to, te went to Beaumont, Texas. What, what year are we talking, 1942? Uh, it's 43. 43? Yeah. Okay. And after you were done with your training in the States, where did you go from well, there? Well, I went there, I went back to, to Utah. And we was we went out on the desert, in California, and set up out there in a the hospital. 
Was that for training or that you... was for training? See, they had the maneuvers every time. Right. And we set up the hospital. We we did the uh, we we provided the hospital for the the troops that were training that that would use that whole session. You know, and then you move on after that after that open after that training. Yeah. So it was, it was on the job training. Oh yeah. That's what it was. Yeah. Yeah. Just like soldiers when we were across the state. Yeah. And then from California, where did you go from there? Uh, New Jersey. New Jersey? Yeah. Worked in a hospital there? No, no, no. Wait to get on a boat to go to England. Okay. So then you were, when you deployed overseas, that you were went to England. Where, where in England were you? Uh, right outside of Stockbridge, just below Winchester. Near the Ando Andover Air Force Base over there. What unit were you with? You, you remember? 34th General Hospital. 34th General Hospital. And what rank were you? Uh, T4, which is same sergeant. Sergeant, yeah. Can you tell us about your experiences there at the hospital? Well, okay, well, you want to know. <laughs> well we were there uh, for the duration. So we were in it. And uh, we, we run a general hospital. And then we, we run a uh, air vac. Uh, when the breakthrough, you know, you know, I think about the breakthrough or not, but uh, that that was point. They would fly to places, the people into Andover, you know, and uh, ambulance to us, and we would uh, take care of what we had, you know, whatever to go, and, and ship them back the next morning. And it was Twelve hours, seven to seven, uh, seven days a week, and, you know, no no break, nothing. And if anybody couldn't go, we had to keep. And I was on uh, S3, surgical ward. We got the bunch, bunch of S1 to seriously had a little bit of a short pipeline there from an oxygen. S2 is orthopedic, every bit in the head, pulleys and stuff on it. S3 was abdominal. I was a non man. We took care of it with that. You meant something about a breakthrough? Huh? The breakthrough? Did you mention something about that? Yeah, yeah. That, that's uh, that's that's when the Germans come back through and made a counterattack over there, okay. and, and that's when we lost there was a heck of a lot of heavy uh, 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 casualties. Well, well, it, it kind of hunkered down in the winter time, you see. But when it happened, and the Germans made a counterattack, and the troops were flying them in, into Andover, and we, we would patch, patch them up. Load them out, and get ready for the next morning. That and we'd, you know, we'd, we'd come in there, but we'd do everything major. You'd go on to the operating room, take that cast off. This guy gets an IV. We give the IV. I give stick a knife. Give the IV. Pull the cast off full of maggots. The peroxide cleaned it up. Cleaned the room out. And he said, "Be ready and put it back on when you get back. I'm gonna look at it before you do. And if you're ready, put the cast back on." He was gone next morning. What theater were the people that, that were coming to your hospital, what theater were they oh, serving oh, in? Oh, we had a map on the board. And we knew where everybody, you know, where did you get hit at? Bing, 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 in, in, in Germany. And you get a chance of paper. We were way ahead of paper. We were in a pattern uh, across the Rhine. English people come up about a week later, the Romney to cross the line. Right with the Patton Conway. Loading that patents. And they said the boy said it. You couldn't even keep the supplies up. <clears throat> how many how many casualties do you think you, you had at the hospital any one time? Oh, I don't know. We had about eighteen beds in that. Just a line of surgical beds, a sign of medical beds. Oh, we, we would turn them over. Uh, probably <coughs> when they come in, probably everybody be gone three or four the next morning. So yours was a stopover point. They were coming. It, it was what well, you, you see, mash. Correct. They, 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 they come in, they fly them in, then hand over. Ambulance would bring them to us. And of course, they had a place up there, you know, where they send them to the right boards, what, what they could get out of. 
and the doctor would do whatever he could, you know, if it needs surgery or, or whatever they could do. And uh, next morning, go, well, you, you go and do you go and do it from seven to seven. All right. Uh, you you might have to go back at six o'clock in the morning to load out the convoy. You had to clean up everything, get it ready for the next convoy coming in. You, you'd be ready by eleven o'clock probably. And you said you said you said you wait. It might not get there till five or six o'clock. You, you don't get a you don't get away from that eleven. And how long were you there at that hospital? Uh, uh, from uh, June till. Uh, uh, well, war ended, and I guess about uh, uh, Ju July, the next year. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. No, it, it on up in July. Yeah, but we we we, uh, we came. We were supposed to go. We had a, we left that. We went to uh, uh, another place. We were supposed to get, go over to Japan, and. They get put, uh, then it said we're going back to states to get a 30-day delay en route. And we came back on the Queen Elizabeth. That was a good trip, six, six, six days. But I, I was a medic. I had to go on the day. See, we, we, we took care of the, uh, 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 what, what do you call it, <laughs> dispensers, you know, yeah. We, we, we took care of that, so we, we had to go on our day ahead of time, but that didn't get done for us. There's 15,000 people on that ship. That big ship on. And, uh, we, I worked in Spencer, I was non coming in Spencer on this, but they had red, white, and blue buttons. If you had a white on this side, red here, and a blue go in the place, you could cross MP strap down that button. And the reason was, they said, if everybody come in to take that your liberty, everybody went to the front of it, it would tip a ship. Now, I, I, I stayed on this side, and the others, uh, uh, the dispensers on this side. So I got over there. I know it didn't fire drill, but <laughs> I was always in the dispensary. <laughs> but uh, but uh, two meals a day, you know. How, how long was your trip? On Six, on? I was on a seven day, six days. Six days. Yeah. Oh. And, and, then, and then the day we got home, uh, it was a day, uh, it was D day day. I mean, D, D, D uh, J. It, it wore in in Japan. We had a 30 day in our house. And I, uh, I knew I wasn't going to go to Japan then. You know, I was free. You guys were say. So you were done once you came back? No, you were deployed again. But no, I know I wasn't going to be deployed to Japan, but I couldn't get out. But we did. Uh, see, we went all different places. Well, we were supposed to be back at the, uh, uh, in Maryland. Well, we went back in and, and sent a bunch of us to uh, Kent Side, Alabama. And they dispersed us of mine. And I ended up in New Baker Hospital. And, uh, uh, I got buddies that got out in September, and uh, I didn't get out until February 28th. I got there, wanted to get out, and well, you know, it said, uh, uh, you're central, working in the hospital. I went and get a <laughs> 10 days pass for Christmas, you know, and I said, I'd have a 10 day pass. Well, you said third day. Well, why are you mowing now? I said, I hope to get out the first, first of January. <laughs> Goes the answer was, get the heck out of here. <laughs> and, and I didn't get it to February 28th. Are there any stories that while you were in England that anything that stands out? Any guys that came in that, that you remember? Or is it just so many guys you can't well, remember when any one or two? Well, when you took a cast off. Pile of maggots there. That that kind of that would break you up if you had wound. But hey, we throw the pipes out, we clean up, made you come in like that. Put the put the vaccine gun, you know, vaccine little gas on. Put put a cast on to those little windows. Have everything put the cast back on, you know. And stick and I put the cast back on. Be gone next month. And how long were these casts on that 
Huh? How long were these casts on these young these guys before uh, they, you got he, he had to get the, get the, get the fly and lay the eggs in that when he was on the battlefield. Now, I don't know how long it took him to get it, but so, some of them was uh, probably forty eight hours where we had them. You know, there a lot of people. That's when we could keep that that uh, moving that uh, pin on 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 the map. You know, yeah. some of forty eight, but we didn't. Put, yeah, some of them just just got hit and stuff. And these these casts were put on on the battlefield. Basically, I, I don't know. He stopped somewhere to get a cast on. Yeah, okay. I don't know where. But he had to, you know, lay over for that 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 the uh, egg to hatch and everything. But it was a clean wound. I can tell you that. What um, what did you do for recreation over there during your downtime? Not much of anything. Well, before we were going South Pacific to give everybody a seven day day leave. Travel uh, and uh, uh, you know fourth, fourth, fourth. Of course, if you've been young, you, you never get that last bunch. Uh, there was two, two other guys and myself. Uh, Wesson was non comma one, and Nick was a one non comma uh, four. And I was non comma three. We run around all the time together. You know, we, we got. To, uh, we were, well, I was engaged before we went over, you know, then. and so everything was, uh, I mean, we, we just run around together, and we took that and we went together. We went to uh, went England, I mean, you know, to London, we were all, uh, all up in the castles up in, in Edinburgh, got on a boat at night, save the time, you know, travel, went over to back Belfast, made over that day, got on a plane the next morning, run around there belly of it, be for it, back over to Westminster and coming all back to it. We 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 run around together like that did all the time. So, but John got a D on right there. But he he got a D John letter. You know what a D John letter is? Yeah. <laughs> you never got one of those. No, I never got I got married they yeah, haven't got them both. Uh, okay. I I forgot what I got them home, yeah. <laughs> Do you um what kind of communications did you have back home? Letter? That I had to take in and throw it out the major's desk every day and let him read it before he's sent back home. So and you get and you get a lot of home. Yeah, that's the communication. Everything was censored. Right. If you had something you didn't want to manage, uh, the major, the major, anybody in the outfit to read, you know, because you could, the other places you could do that would be quartermaster and stuff like that. But uh, you, you had another box you drop that in. It shipped out, and somebody else read it. So, so letters was all the only communication you had. Was, oh yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. You were there for, for three years. How long were you actually in England? Uh, about fourteen months. Fourteen months. Yeah. Is there anything that stands out about your time over there? The people. Just the people? You see, uh, 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 pe pe you got the class over there, which, you know, we had integration here, we went in. It wasn't in the, in the service for integrated at that time, see. But uh, a few of the guys brought a bicycle and it could ride, you know, it rented out to you for a buck. You know, a day or something. If you got got a day off, which was why you got a day off. And it's just some of, we'd ride on down the road there, a couple of miles, you know. We we knew this town over there. You stop there, some kid, 12, 14 years old. Uh, you know, about the town. He never met that. He didn't know nothing about it because it's a class. His daddy worked for him. Uh, the, you know the. The, the uh, landlord, and uh, they, they couldn't eat fish in the stream. They couldn't kill a rabbit. And those boys in the quartermaster, they set tracks, <laughs> traps and caught a few rabbits, scared them up, <laughs> kicked them over for a roast them over for. I don't know what happened if we got caught, but they see that. And, and, and you go to the pub, which was a, a room in the house. All the old guys, and, and, and 
they didn't work long hours in the field. They were down there and shoot dots. And the boy worked in the Kenny Stickle. Uh, he, he liked to drink too, but uh, uh, he could shoot, shoot dots. Uh, oh, chap, you want to have a place some jobs? Yeah, yeah, I guess so. And he'd beat him. Lucky old chap, lucky old chap. That <laughs> work at your dogs. <laughs> Good had it for a laugh. <laughs> See, so the people is what stand out the most. Yeah, the, the difference. No. The differences. Yeah, that's it. That was ridiculous. I guess if somebody else made it a lot different than that. Maybe. And the queen, that was a queen or the king, that was a crazy. But, but the uh, Canadians didn't like it. When we wanted us to, uh, the war had ended, see, we were in London. And we uh, were three of us. We went on down, you know, and uh, uh, here come some Canadians. They were, they had a little bit more, too much of uh, the brew, I think. Yeah, but, they were let on. The king and king and England starts it. The, they start the war and make us come over here and fight it for them. They were raising cane, put them to shot off, you know. Let them have it. But they, they were really down in England and king and everything else. I don't think a Bobby would even step in a bunch of that much. <laughs> then going, going into Mexico is another thing. <clears throat> See, we, 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 were in, uh, we were in Beaumont. We got a couple of days off, and then, you know, a couple of Sundays off. And of course, a whole bunch of us got together. And the, you, you would dad go to Mexico, you didn't have about eight, ten together, you know. And we would always just see what goes on, how it work. And so we decided to go back and watch a bullfight. Uh, one price over here. On the sunny side, one place on the shady side. Of course, we got the sunny side cheapest. I think we a full board. We got it after the third because they were pretty good. You never heard it yet. Get back. How did your experiences uh, in the service during during the war? How did it affect you? from then until now? Uh, I had four children. They were going to go to camp. They will get out of the household. They will go mingle with other people. I seen guys come in. The first day at Camp Lee at double bunks. You know, just all along. You, 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 I got the bottom bunk. And that night the guy on that bed, but type was sniffing. I never spent a night, a night away from my home in my life. I'm afraid I'm going to fall out. I said, you want to swap? So I swapped. So I didn't know about much progress. And I seen guys that uh, I know never drank for them in the service. And they drank. And whine and complain. And it, 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 you, you got to get out in the real world. That's the, the well, maybe maybe you're different. The people that homeschool the kids, raise them in a bubble. It's not like I don't think that. And I, I think this thing of right now, uh, everybody wins. Don't they? Get a bit of relief. You you go get a ribbon, right? If you're losing team, right? Everybody win. You get the job. Maybe you got to do it. You get it to the world. It's dog eat dog. Right? right. And, and, and you've got to be prepared for it. And, and you can't wait till you're uh, out there. You know, that here you are, thrown out there in the world. Some, some people can cope, some people can't cope. I'll tell you, this is not the good Jewish drink at all. Uh, I was in Illinois with a guy, but he kept, you know, not good. Uh, Mike Bornstein. He was in Wisconsin. He was the only child. 
and uh, he was Jewish. And we went to, uh, uh, well, I, I went to uh, Beaumont, Texas. When I, I came back, we came back. The whole, uh, once went to school, came back to Utah, Bigham said it, and everything had left. And I thought I was gone. But anyway, the center, we, the center had caught up to him. And I, I got out there and, uh, uh, you know, get, get off in camp, get something to eat. A bunch of us. We went to the motor. Mine was three oysters, a few potato chips, a bit of French, so French fries, and a cold strong Coke. That, that was what I was after. And, and we went into this restaurant, and uh, uh, there was Mike sitting over after the girl. But when it was an independent basic train, he was always wanted to go to pick up, pick up a girl. That was his greatest thing, you know, he was going. And so I stopped and uh, said, how you doing, Mike? Uh, he transferred out because he had flat feet, and he was in the hospital there. So, uh, that, that's, I'm, I'm not saying nothing about you know that, but, but that's, that's the worst. But uh, he said, I got an idea. And he goes, This is my wife. I said, Yeah. He said, I'm on a 10 day furlough. I, I said, Yeah. Why aren't you going home? He said, I can't go home. I said, What do you mean? My parents wish I was dead. I, I don't know if any of you Jewish. I, I don't know. You know? How do you like that? And he wanted to talk to me. He was changing, she was Catholic, he was changing over to the Catholic. I guess he just wanted somebody to talk to. Now, just a little meal, I got up and on over there. See, that, that, that people, you, you get out here, there's one thing. You've got to deal with the hand that you throw in your face. I felt sorry for Mike. You know, his daddy, he couldn't go home. Can you imagine that? Maybe you can, I don't know. You see? They see them things like that. And uh, you get hurt. Uh, step here. You, if, if, if you don't think positive, you're doomed. I seen guys with bullet moon, lead moon, moon, you didn't want to move. A guy tank run over. His old backside, you know, laid on his belly, and he laid on his belly that's for right a while. Probably got a lot of, he had a, he had a heck of a lot of uh, plastic surgery to, you know, skin graft ever, ever went, and, and, and wasn't nothing you could do except to, to keep him, you know, a little bit comfortable and keep it going and keep him getting an infection until he moved on someplace else to get it. And he, he was, he was going on. He was walk. And another boy had a big hole in his, in his back like that. But it's only he couldn't walk. That was a Jewish boy too. And uh, and that was he stood up, you know. And I says, how'd you do that? He said, well, every night when the lights was out, I hung my feet over the bed and worked. Wherever. If you get hurt and you don't do therapy, you bail off. I've seen people, I know people, this is not too long ago. I've had both my knees done at the same time and, and, and did it. I was milking cows. They said you can go with me. It was 30 days after, 30 days, I was back in milk bottle. I went down there with a cane. I didn't run up down the steps, but I got from the bar, see. But uh, it, 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 it's what you do. And uh, that's, uh, but it's all in that set boy. He, he, he got people to, he could have laid down and believe what they told him, and he'd never walk. Wouldn't he? That's all, it's, it's all, attitude, attitude, attitude. How do, you, how, do you, how do you see things today being different with, you know, with our current conflict compared to how things were 
in World War II. How, how do you see things different or the same? I, I, I think I think it's all political. Just 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 we don't want to just I said on that. So we, we are distancing ourselves from Israel right now. They want to take out the uh, uh, atomic stuff of uh, them. Was there no politics back I, in World War Two? Was there no politics? Oh, oh, it may have been. Yes, yes. I, I agree with you. But uh, did, didn't nobody slow uh, slow Patton down? Nobody slowed Patton down. Yes, it was then. See, MacArthur wanted to go and take over Russia. If you if look reading this, that was all politics. They shut him down. It would have been a, this Cold War would have been a different thing if they let uh, MacArthur go. Oh yes, it was then. But but you can see it more more now. I mean, of course, your communications and everything. You see, it yeah, it it, it probably was a heck. I know it was, and we didn't see it all. But nobody slowed Patton down. You know. Do you see politics today being more of a hindrance than it was then? Even uh, though it. Nobody. Uh, no, no, well, I don't care what I say. No, nobody wants to offend the other country. See, we we get we give. You, you, you don't keep on giving in, giving in all your life. You got to stand up for your principles. And, and I think we were, we are kind of getting off what we should be. Our principles may be a little bit different. I, I, I don't know now. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong in my thinking. But this thing of everybody winning, everybody, you know, and then you know, said the thing with the, from cradle to grave, we take care of you. It doesn't work too well, does it? I, well, it's, it's not my philosophy. I mean, no, huh? I, I maybe, 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 maybe it's, maybe it's, maybe, maybe it should be going the other way. I don't know. Maybe it. Maybe we should take care of that body. But how are you gonna do it? Look, look you, you see, I come, I, I come, I, I got married. Day I got, I got, day I got home. That's another story, but uh, then I got home, and because uh, uh, I didn't get out of my back for four months later, along, but uh, I brought it there for I had to work. Debt, debt, couldn't stand debt. Wife and I would buy a tractor. I did. When I went there, it was old steel wheel tractor. Bought it and. Uh, Three horses, horses and stuff. And, and uh, debt worried me to death. Because if you got debt, you pay interest. Interest to me is uh, money down the rat hole, you might say. It, 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 not nothing. But but you gotta you got to go in debt to get in place. If you don't have anything, start. You know. But, uh, well, we, we said that there was six trillion dollars in four years of debt. Is this country going bad off? Huh? I hear what you're saying. <laughs> From well, George Washington all the way time he took up, it was ten. And he's adding six. That's, that's somebody has a it's, it's loss in business at some place, you know. But I figured if I, I put a, anything I'd want to at least get a dollar and dime back of my money. Huh? You said you got married as soon as you got back? Yeah. Was that spontaneous or had you planned to do it? I planned to do it before we went home. The day you got back? <laughs> no, no, no. Not, no, no, no. Before I went over, no. I was I was, I wasn't getting married good. Well, that's another story. But, well, you say, uh, we, we come from, uh, here over there, there was a lot of older guys in the service, uh, you know. And if, if, if and then senior at the camps, that's the reason I got a T underneath mine. It, it's technically I did so. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I, we used to give to pull stitches, but we never sold anybody out. We, we'd give IVs, you know, and put on cast and, and, and all that kind of stuff. There's, there's two of stick stick of my did so, on the board. We we, we give the IVs. Because in that case, the uh, nurses had the, the job to keep up with the bookwork that had to follow that patient, what he was done. 
You, you understand what I'm saying? But we, we, we done all that. But uh, but anyway, uh, we came back here, and we were here, and uh, uh, my wife's lived it was shooting rivers in in Baltimore, and uh, she got married, her license, and uh, I was moving a three day pass to get married. Well, here come this. Uh, we we up in a Dennis hotel waiting to get overseas. I was a non com on the fifth floor. Up there. And uh, 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 we had the first sergeant that we had been this old, like I said, the oldest sergeant up there. Yeah, but he, he, he stayed here because he was old, the uh, old army. And he caught this guy. Well, he was six feet tall, 200 pounds, maybe. You know, and he'd get a flank move, go down the street on us. And Lieutenant Carly Midler, best soldier in the outfit. But he, he became first sergeant. And of course, it, yeah, I think it was his head a little bit. He was. Uh, uh, it come this Saturday. If I caught the train in, in Atlantic City and got to Washington D.C., I could catch a bus home and come back next on a Sunday, on a Saturday afternoon, say, and uh, one one to pass. So uh, uh, went to chow, twelve o'clock, you know. Oh, Sergeant thought Kaufman was all upset. He got he ain't giving no passes out. They ain't giving no passes out. So I went back back to pick up my pass. And he says, uh, now you were not on your lame done all this doing the duty. I said, Yeah. No. What do you mean? And uh, no, no, if you don't get a pass, so, well you can report to the mess sergeant down there in, in the mess hall. So I said, so, okay, went on down there. And this guy Lowe was a mess sergeant because he was kidding me. Ah, look at what I got! Look at what I got now! I said, yeah. He said, you shoot two guys over there. I didn't care. Uh, feel so. I said, hey, you go over there and you make sure they get that done, cleaned up and washed up and everything. It's already been washed up. We've been on the paper. I can come back and do the head. And it wasn't going to. It wasn't nobody coming and inspecting till three or four o'clock. Before you, you know, you couldn't make. You couldn't get no. You go no place. If after you've done it, I, I, that that's 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 routine, you know. And I says, "Honey, why don't I get out of here?" And a, a major, which is locked. The, the, the officers mess halls right down here, going back in. I said, "Hey, look, I'm gone. I'm gone. I'm getting out of here." He says, "What do you mean? Oh, there's my pass right there. There's my pass right there." So uh, I went up and right up in front of the major. Uh, uh, and I says. Uh, uh, I told him that uh, I can go home. If I get that pass, this might be the last weekend I can do that. I said, I helped you this morning uh, find the guy. See, I don't know your clothes thing, you know, everything you had to have, every sock and everything. Somebody up there had some piece of uh, clothes missing on the floor. And I was up there and somebody said, hey, the sergeant uh, wants to see you, uh, Major wants to see you. And I run up there and he said, who is so and they did you want that? Because they were running around and doing that, I guess they have something to do. And so I found a guy and showed him whatever sock of uh, what it was, you know. And then went on back and I checked it off and went on back down. And I said, he won't let me know. And if I can get that, I can go home. But he got my pass and, and said, because it wasn't working, I helped you this morning. And he said, where is he at? Well, he was a big guy, regular side guy. Uh, and I said, I've sent him the first box of and he was sitting in the chair, you know, and had this pass of sitting there, and like had a deck of like cards all out and everything. And so, of course, when Ben uh, Beck popped in there, he jumped up like a jack in the box and saluted, you know. And I was, he didn't see me. And Major said, What about that thing, Sergeant Dunn's going to have his pass? And I looked around the corner. Oh, that burned that Sergeant. <laughs> I mean, it really burned. <laughs> he said, I, I think you ought to have it. And he said, yes sir, yes sir, and give it to me then. I said, thank you. I said, thank you. Thank the major. I was gone, caught that train. The train had been ready to pull out, but I got I made it. Went up five steps of flares, changed my clothes, and ran all the way down to the station. <laughs> so that that kind of burned him. But you know what I had next Sunday? I had uh, Sunday night I had charge seeking charge of course. <laughs> you got even.
<laughs> yeah, but I wasn't going to get no free to pass in because it had to go through him. <laughs> you know? But that was my plan because she shipped that for us. One of the great things about this conversation we're having is that, you know, we're recording it and documenting it for hundred years or two hundred years, you know, however, however long. And grandchildren and great grandchildren and their grandchildren are gonna see this one day. Oh, oh. you be happy that? <laughs> and then, you okay. know, other people's children and grandchildren yeah. will, will see it someday. Um, is there anything that you want to convey to them about your generation, about your service, the it's, people it's, that you serve thing, with? This thing of, of Tom Brokaw. Uh, uh, I know you. Yeah, greatest generation it, it, it is a good one. Wait a minute. Now let, let, let's look at the generation then. Uh, it, uh, well, we had a whole lot of camaraderie in, in the service. The three of us. Neither none of us smoked, none of us drank. We didn't run around, you know, nothing. We were stuck together. Those old fool John. He got he got the John done, but he he married a nurse after he came out. That was in there. <laughs> <laughs> but but anyway, uh, I don't correspond with anybody. I was in the service. But that you know, was real close to me. It was real close. You had a certain amount of Colorado. And, and everybody, uh, you, you had to work for what you got. You had to have a goal. But today, well, Vietnam was the worst thing I ever seen. You know, uh, people running off to Canada. But I, I know people that uh, got out, that uh, conscience objectors and working on a farm when I was in that. And the week after the war ended, they quit where they were. I, I, I know people like that, you know, then. But uh, uh, t today it's the. the you don't have that come right. See, everybody wore, brought war bonds back then. Everybody spoke to you. I, I used to hitchhike a lot. A couple of us, you know. Like was it, when it was in Utah, I, I don't know whether I would get to go to, go to uh, uh, Idaho. Let's get up there, hitchhike to uh, Pocatello, Idaho, you know. Just walk down the street, because Mormon country, everything was dead on Sunday. And hitchhike back. A little trouble to get back. You know, bad. Uh, another boy and I, uh, we were up there, on, up there on the desert. And we decided uh, we were up there. Maybe we'd never see the uh, in the, uh, the Pacific Ocean. We, we, we hitchhiked. We got up there in the morning about 6 o'clock. We had a day off. And uh, hitchhiked to Long Beach, California. Went down on the, down on the beach. It was kind of a a carnival thing like get the hands in the water. This is a good We've seen the Pacific Ocean. Got a hot dog or something. And, and hits out back. All you have to do is get up there and stay on the main trip. And if somebody says, I'm going to pick you up, or, and, well, I'm going to take you short, but you can do maybe some more. And it's going to take you off from that main road. Don't go. You go out on the main road, you suck. As long as you're on the same road, you're in uniform, you get it right. It was that kind of thing. I don't know what it worked now. I don't think so. Everybody was for this war. To me, all the people that really, like I said, some some people they they've been doing everything to get out of it, and everything they can. To look after it. I had two brothers in there. One of them was in Bastogne. He was reported uh, missing in action. Did you communicate with them at all? Did you know what, what they were doing but, uh, at the now, time? Now, uh, my brother, after he got out, uh, after it deliberated, he was in a, a, a hospital in England. And my mother wrote and told me the hospital he was in because he had the address. So I go and tell the mate to look, I, I got a chance to go over here. So I got the bus and went over there and, and seen him. And I, I stayed there that night in there. You know, got a, got a, got a bunk in, 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 in the barracks, and come back the next morning. Got a I see him over there, and then 
Yeah. 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 One of the things it sounds like you were saying when I asked about the differences uh, between then and now is that then the entire country was involved in the war effort, even people that were here. Oh, yeah. Where today things go on overseas, nobody even pays attention. So everybody then was involved in one way or another, even if it was just buying oh, war yeah, bonds. Oh, yeah, oh, yes, yes. Or recycling. It was, it was rationed. Right. Now, wait a minute, I heard people say about, about rationing, you know, killing animals and, and selling stuff on the black market, Captain. I've heard people that say that some people did that, you know, when the stuff goes, you, 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 you got that. But everything was rationed, everybody more or less stayed with it, you know, and, and, and learned to live with it. Who's your ration now? Huh? Said. Is there anything that uh, we haven't covered that you want to talk about, or anything I haven't asked you that you like? Well, I grew up fast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you did. Yeah. You want to? Yeah. All right. Let's catch up and ask. When you were when you were in England, did you um, did you stay in barracks or did you live in a in a in a house? Um, Quonset. Quonset hut. Yeah, we had Quonset, double bunks, and uh, we went out to, when we when we went there, uh, they give us a mattress cover, uh, uh, you know, a bunk, and they said there's a straw rick over there, go fill it full of straw, and put it on the bunk. That's your bed. Because if they had slats on these bunks, like you put them. Um, uh, stuff, shipping stuff, you know, this way and this way. And I was non common so I got the top bunk. I was a little guy. Like I said, I weighed about 145, 50 pounds. The guy was sleeping below me. He was about six feet moaning and groaning all the time because let me swap with you. I said, no, you can't swap. I'm supposed to be up here. <laughs> you touched on it just a little bit. I wanted to expand a little more about the, the relationship from the um, the American soldiers with the British population, um, you mentioned about their class and all that. But yeah. as far as them, how did they treat you guys? Were they um, well? well, well I, I didn't have any any communication. Well, you see, you, you probably heard it. Uh, some of them got married to the English women and stuff over there. I think maybe some of them was the women want to get back here because I know one case of guy got married and. It don't, uh, I think a couple of years after he was married to, to back here that uh, uh, she, they were no longer married. She, she here and said, I don't know what that deal happened. I didn't know the guy too good or nothing. But I, I knew some of them did, uh, you know, fraternize a little bit, but I, I know I didn't, I, I didn't get involved. I didn't in the way shape or form with them. Just like the one down at the pub, stick of shooting darts or something like that. But just, just to get, get away from breaking. Right that kind of, we, we just stayed in a concert. Because everything was blackout then, you know. That was my next question. I had a right here blackout, so yeah. I was going to ask you about yeah. it. Yeah. So t tell us tell us how that, that that would work with the blackouts. Just Well, well it just, you just, a whole, 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 whole camp. You couldn't see a light. See, even, you walk those streets, it's all, it's inside light, but it's all built around, so no light shine at all. You wouldn't doubt, because a lot of people smoke, I just smoked them. Using desk to light a cigarette, walking around outside at night. You know. And you already answered this, but I didn't write it down in my notes. What year did you get over in St. England? It, it was in uh, 43. In 43. Wait, wait, wait a minute. 44. Wait, wait, it was the war, when the war started. Yeah. Wait, wait, the war, what did it for, uh, June 6th? 19, that was 40, June 6th, 1944 was D-Day. D-Day. So you were there before we, we, that? No, no, we got, we got that set up two or three days after that. The boat, boat hadn't landed at D-Day. Yeah. We landed in Liverpool and left in Liverpool. And do you remember? Do you remember where you were, or how you heard about um, the fact that we had troops on in Normandy, that on D-Day? Do, do you remember how you got word of that? Was uh, it, was my mother sent me. No, yeah, uh, that uh, he was uh, my brother's business in action. You see, now 
and I, I, I didn't know whether they, the, I didn't know whether the hunting first had even gone over there at that time. See, no, but no communications like that. And you, you came back to the United States on the Queen Elizabeth. Yeah. What was that like? Well, <laughs> if uh, we had, I had a bunk, but everybody, if you, if you didn't have duty, you, you had a, you had a cot, you know, a cot, but you slept on. Uh, you was in it from seven o'clock in the morning to seven o'clock at night. At seven o'clock at night, you picked up your duffel bag and went on the deck, and somebody else took your cot from seven o'clock at night to seven o'clock the next morning. Two meals a day, but you, you know, go down and get a sandwich. You, you could eat all you could in there, but you didn't have to go out. But I had this uh, uh, blue button, and I was working over here, and, and, and I, I kind of sniggled in there for one, but I never did, uh, you know, meal. And how did you get to England? You, you, you took a Liberty ship or? Um... Athlon Castle, which was a British ship, 14 days going over. Slick and slimy steps going down the boat. And we had, I think, uh, six high people. You know, up a book. Yeah. So I imagine the, the oh, yeah. uh, Queen, Queen Elizabeth was a little bit nicer. Oh, than oh good man, but I had a cot there. <laughs> On cot. No, you know, it, it, you had a. It was a, it was a troop ship, you see. You had a nine down here like this, you know, you see. And, and beds on this side, beds on this side, down that hole. You had to fall over that. Boys were saying, I, I never got seasick, but some people got sick. We got some pe had some people over back that uh, didn't even want to come back. They got so sick. Right? Ma'am, do you have any stories that he's told you in the past that... Nope. You, you, <laughs> I've learned quite a bit today. Is there anything you wanted to ask him now? The only thing would be, he was talking about veterans. Bernard went in, when was Bernard in the Navy? Oh, that, that was from uh, Vietnam. His son. Oh, yeah, and my son was in they asked Vietnam. Him any other family members oh, oh yeah, I forgot Bernard. about him. He, he was in the Navy in, in Vietnam that, on a uh, aircraft carrier. 